Welcome back to the Team to Be Miami Heat podcast. My name is Amir. Today we got Major back on the podcast. How are you doing today, Major? I'm doing great. Excited to talk Miami Heat basketball as always. It's always a blast getting to talk about the Heat. Yeah, thanks for hopping on. I think this is like your third time on my channel. I know you've joined a couple roundtables, but I think this is the third yeah. episode you and I have done um, one-on-one. So always appreciate your time and your perspective. And so wanted to talk to you because there's not a lot going on right now um, when it comes to the Miami Heat. And usually during the offseason, it's all about free agency or trades. And we know mm-hmm. that the Miami Heat have no cap space. We're a million or two under the second apron, so we can't even add um, our 15th player to the team so we have one roster spot available and we all know that through trades it's not likely that we're going to make a move it's possible but I don't think any of the guys that we've been linked to we have enough assets to get those guys or we don't have the willingness to take on contracts like Zach Levine's or taking a one-year rental with Brandon Ingram because Brandon Ingram has an expiring contract which is um Nice, but he's looking for a $208 million four-year extension, um, which is what Donovan Mitchell just got. So um, not a lot going to happen, but I just want to get your perspective um, just on what can the Miami Heat do next season to avoid the play-in? What can we do just to improve, to elevate our, ourselves, or even become a contender? Because I know you have a lot of faith, one of the, the most positive Miami Heat fans That's out true. there. But what can we do? essentially next season outside of health outside of just saying can the Miami Heat be healthy for one season because I know we I, I'm on the same boat as you in earnest you know health is wealth for this Miami Heat team if we could be healthy I have faith in this team being a top at least five seed next season yeah. but it's contingent on health but what can they do to just besides that compete and elevate their chances next season well it, I was definitely going to say health. And then you said besides health, because uh, that is the number one thing. We all know that. That's why you said besides health. We all know that. Um, it's got to be the young guys stepping up. Um, I'm going to include Hero in that. And I know he's a lot of people don't consider him the young guy anymore. And I mean, Bam's kind of on young. that line too. He's 24. I consider him young. Yeah. So like, they've been on the team for a while and they're known as the core three, even if you don't like that heroes a part of that core of this team but uh i mean you got hero and bam if they can make another leap i mean bam's gonna make a leap he's coming back from the olympics he's been incredible um and i think the world's starting to see that too which is awesome um even having celtics fans and everyone starting to turn on bam in sense of they love him and they keep saying like when wendy said bam was gonna lose his minutes celtics twitter was like what are you talking about? Bam's not going to lose his minutes, um, which is crazy to see. So I think if he just continues his trajectory, that obviously helps the Heat. His three-point shooting on Team USA been pretty good. But then again, your Team USA playing in the Olympics, they have, you know, what is it, 10 of the best 12 players in the tournament, you could argue. Um, so probably 10 of the best 13 would say I forgot about Shea for a second, to be honest. Um, But he's going to get good looks there. So I'm trying to see how that's going to turn out when you're with the Heat, and we all know not the best offensive team. But he's showing he can make them in rhythm, so that's going to be huge for the Heat. Hero kind of taking that next step, and I think it's more so just accepting more of an off-ball role. They have Terry now. Terry's neck seems to be doing pretty well, and I don't think they'll – the Heat don't think it's going to be a big problem. And then you have Haquez and Jovic are probably in that second tier. Um, Haquez, incredible summer league. He played two games, I believe, and made all summer league second team, which I thought was crazy. But he was just, I mean, the guy is just so much better than everyone. He just has such a presence of mind. He knows how to play basketball. So I think he's going to continue to grow. A lot of people look at Haquez like he doesn't have a huge ceiling, but a really high floor. I mean, I think he's got a pretty good ceiling too. He's really athletic. He can improve in his three-point shot, which I think that'll happen. I think that's just a natural progression for most players in the NBA, especially ones with willingness to take it in tools that Haquez already has. And he'll learn how to attack mismatches a little bit better. Me and Brady always talk and joke about how he just goes straight into the chest of defense, which I love. But it 
does make the heat better if he attach it attacks a mismatch. Um, and then Jovic, if he's going to be more consistent, um, he has all the offensive talent in the world. He started carving out a little role at the end of the year. And I mean, I even tweeted out, I think there's a case for him to be the starting point guard um, when Terry was down and everything. I, I like the way he pushes the ball. Um, then you have the two rookies, not expecting much out of them this year. Um, the two draft picks, so I'll clarify, not expecting too much. Um, just the Heat typically don't play rookies that much. I know we just had Hawkes, and he was incredible. But if we get that again, I think we'll be pretty solid and avoid the play in. And then you got Kashad. Um, Kashad Johnson, I think out of all the rookies that are going to be on this team, Kashad Johnson has the best chance to play the most minutes. Um, He's the protocol, you know, three and D. Yep. He's that Miami. He's that prototype that we need, the glue guy. I don't want to say replacement of Caleb Martin because that's that's saying a lot because Caleb took a while, obviously, to Mm -hmm. develop his offense to improve that shot. But he looks like he's a better defender than than Caleb early on because he's way more athletic and that helps with his Mm -hmm. ability to shot block. And he's just also just so energetic um, when it comes to both ends of the floor. So I'm excited for him too. Yeah, I mean, Caleb's athletic, but Kashad jumps out of the gym. So, I mean, Kashad's just one of those freaks. He's a natural four for the Miami Heat because he's not the biggest guy in the world in height. So that already checks a box that the Heat look for for a four. Yes. Um, a little small ball, but he plays great defense. He just looks like a linebacker out there too. Um, so I think he's going to have the most critical role out of all the rookies because he plays a position of need and he's going to get a standard contract this year. As soon as they can do the pro rated and not go over the second apron, that man's getting his, um, contract and then two way spot opens up. Who do you think he, um, plays ahead of like is it going to be due to injuries or like when do you think he comes in because you said he's a natural kind of small ball four for us he could play anywhere be and like let's say small forward to even backup center if Spo yes. wants to go crazy and you know if Thomas Bryan is completely ineffective or hurt or Kalel is just not ready at all mm-hmm. um but like more so he is in that four spot but in that rotation you got Jovic possibly starting or or Haywood, who knows, right? I mean, we'll see how long we allow Tyler and Terry to be our backcourt starting duo. That that might change. I don't think it is, but I'm going to assume that Jovic is going to start. Then it comes Haywood Highsmith at the backup four. Then you even have Kevin Love. Like, So does he just got a leapfrog, you think, Kevin Love? Because he's going to be 35 next season. We know he's going to be playing probably like 8 to 10 minutes. He played like 12 minutes last year. I think he's probably mm-hmm. going to play – eight to 10 minutes perhaps and probably play every other game. I don't know if he's going to be completely the next like UD or he's like that coach, you know what I mean? Versus like the actual player. Cause he could still, he has stuff in the tank. He yeah. can still help us rebounding. He can still hit that three. He's going to, he's not going to be like Haslam where he literally didn't play for four years. So does he leapfrog him? Like where does he come in in that like depth chart? So I think we have multiple options here. So Jovic, is more leaning offense on ball. Um, I think he's pretty good with the ball shooting. Um, so if you're looking for offense, you're going to go Jovic. High Smith is probably like the in between. I mean, he's an elite defender. Don't get me wrong. High Smith is one of the best um, perimeter defenders in the NBA, but he has more offense than Kashad, but Kashad's a little bit bigger. Um, Love, I think, probably has the best chance to be a backup five more than really a four. I think Love's just going to be – I always I like calling them backup bigs because especially how the Heat play, they usually don't have two big guys on the floor at the same time. But I think Love also, to your point, he's not going to play every game. He's not going to play a ton of minutes. So you just have to be a complimentary role. And then we open the show talking about health. So I'm taking into account there's going to be some injuries. And, you know, maybe Jovic does – play some minutes at point guard and then you have more minutes at the four um and then you have high smith there and kashad so i think there's a very big matchup dependency also if you're playing a bigger team kashad will get some minutes so i don't think he has to leapfrog love i don't think they'll be really competing for the same minutes the closest competition would be high smith and i think high smith has the edge but especially if injuries happen kashad's nba ready in my opinion yeah he smith has 
has to, or he's Highsmith. I say Highsmith. Highsmith. He has to have the advantage, obviously, because he's been in the league. It shows what playing against NBA competition like does mm-hmm. for you. Look at his growth. Like same with Jaime playing in the summer league, like you mentioned earlier. You saw what a guy who played seventy games in the NBA looks like versus guys who are not. You know, there's some like, there's some NBA players out there, but the like fifty percent or whatever, maybe even seventy percent of those guys are not going to be in the league. They might be in the G League, which is fine, but Haywood's going to have that advantage, though, still, because he's more polished offensively. Like, we've seen him play now for, what, three seasons with the Miami Heat? And look how long it took for him to finally get that tiny push shot. Like, he started finally, outside of being a catch-and-shoot, you know, from the wings and the corners, three-point shooter. You saw him put the ball on the floor a little bit and doing that, like, floater kind of push shot that P.J. Tucker was starting to do for the Miami Heat. And so it took him years to do that. So, I mean, it might take Kashad years to to develop his skill set. Like, he's going to be out there because of his freak athletic ability, his size, his energy, and his defense, right? So, like, that's how Highsmith got yeah. out there in the first place was his defense. Like, his – like, what is he, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but he has, like, a 6'9 wingspan, right? Like, that helped him get on the floor. And his three-point shot wasn't great until, again, until last season on low volume. So he got up to 40% eventually. And that's what Kashad needs to work on is his um, three-point shooting, just a shooting in general, but it's most likely going to be standing in the corners, obviously, allowing Jimmy, Bam, Terry, Tyler to, to operate at, you know, all levels of the court. But like he needs to spread the floor for them and create avenues and lanes for more, hopefully more so Jimmy Butler, who can be aggressive um, next season. So, Speaking of Jimmy Butler, what are your thoughts on him? I know the last time we had you on, I think – I'm not sure, but I think the whole idea was what's the situation with July uh, 7th and his contract extension. And um, we know that Pat shut that down saying, like, we're going to wait and see. Jimmy accepted that. So what are your thoughts on Jimmy Butler just next season in a contract year? And do you think he's going to be with us for the foreseeable future? Do you see him picking up his uh, player option? The following season, do you think he requests the trade? Do we think we trade him? Like, how does that all play out in your mind? Yeah, I was wrong on this. I thought the Heat would cave and give him a contract, especially the way they had been talking about him. Um, just my gut feeling of, I feel like, you know, that's just what it's going to boil down to. It's a star driven league. But I mean, cutthroat Pat was back. That's old Pat Riley. Like, hey, yeah, you're Jimmy Butler. And I just said you're the reason we're a contender when healthy, but. If you're not falling in line, then you know we'll find a guy that will. Um, I think the least likely scenario is he opts in. I just don't think that's really on Jimmy's radar. Depending so I think on his like, season, though, next season, if he gets hurt, if he gets hurt like a real injury where he misses, like like Tyler, yeah. you know, like a 30, 40 game injury, then he's opting in for sure. Because then he's like, I gotta. Then you'll become a free agent after that, right? I think he will because his market's going to be down if he gets hurt again after an MCL injury and then, you know, another year of games under his belt or less than that, if he does get like a significant injury. So I think that's the biggest factor. That would be the only avenue he opts in is just like, Hey, he had this injury. He's not going to have a market because people, he's an older player. He's a physical player. And then if he loses some of that athleticism and his body's wearing down, people are going to be a, little bit worried about that that would be the only avenue but outside of like some freak injury um i think what i what i think is going to happen and i was just wrong so maybe it's going to be the exact opposite i think he'll stay in miami long term he likes being challenged i know that whole quote on andy Mm -hmm. he supposedly said that jimmy does is not used to being challenged that was a misquote if he in fact said it. I didn't get to listen to the audio, but he was meaning to say he is used to being challenged. Like this is Jimmy's environment that he loves. This is why he came to the heat. No nonsense. Get the best out of me. I get the best out of you. Um, he's a dog, right? And what's UD's saying is like basically you put a dog out in the in the yard and they'll make some trouble, but put them in the kennel with other dogs and they're right at home. Like that's Jimmy, right? Like think back a couple years when him and Spo got into it and everyone was like, oh, they're going to trade Jimmy. They hate you. No, they went to the finals after that. Um, so th- he's used to this. 
could he take it as a slight and it's like, hey, they didn't want to pay me my money. I'm leaving. That's what some people have reported. Like Ethan uh, has said, that's kind of what he thinks is going to happen. Um, and he thinks he's going to opt out. Other people say differently. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's just Who hard to knows? tell with Jimmy. You never know. Yeah, but I, I think he'll come back. I think he'll retire in Miami. Um, he has no reason to say some of the stuff he said, not in interviews and stuff, if he wasn't liking the idea of staying in Miami. That's a good point. So what's your prediction for the Miami Heat's regular season next season? Do you think they will be a playing team for the third time in a row and, and we break up this Jimmy Butler build? And or it doesn't have to be necessarily Jimmy, but like, do we trade Tyler and say, hey, this is the sixth time we've run it back with the core of Jimmy, Tyler, and Bam, throwing Duncan in there technically too. Um, so what do you think? Do you think we're a playing team again based on what ESPN and all these other um, sites are projecting us, you know, based on our off season and just how many wins they think we'll have next year? They put us at eighth, 44.5 wins. Do you think that's true or do you think we can be healthy Bam can take an, uh, a leap from, you know, his confidence from the Olympics. Jimmy, contract year. Jaime, you said, breaks out. You know, Jovic develops. Kalel gets some playing time, et cetera. Like, what's your prediction for them seeding-wise going into the playoffs? It's a tough one. Because if they're healthy, I mean, as you said, and I say all the time, I'm delusional and I'm optimistic about this team. I mean, like we always say playoffs tell and they keep making the finals and conference finals. Um, you know, the only times they didn't is right after the bubble and then Jimmy gets hurt and then they play the super team Boston Celtics. They had no chance. Right. Um, I think if they're healthy enough, healthy enough, basically they could be a four or five seed easily. Um, I, I mean, I think Jimmy will really turn it up and it's not Jimmy. It's not as much missed games that I'm worried about. It's more so, you know, how you have those games where Jimmy's kind of staying in the corner a little bit. Um, that's more so what I look for with Jimmy. And I think that's more so what the heat are wanting. Like, Hey, you didn't miss too many missed games. And when you did miss the games, it was for legit reasons is kind of those games where you were out there, but not really out there. Load um, managing, load managing in games, shooting in more. Games. Like, like him shooting more threes is like a good sign and bad sign. It's like a good sign because you're expanding yeah. your game, but it's a bad sign because like you're not finishing at the rim, you're not getting the fouls because they change the the way they call fouls, you know, after the All Star break. So it's like a good and bad yeah. thing. But then there's games where he takes like eight shots. It's like you played a game like you played 35 minutes, but you took eight shots and a loss. Like, no, that's unacceptable. Like you're just standing around. Like you're not playmaking. The biggest mm -hmm. barometer we always say with Jimmy, if he's engaged or not, is the is defense. Like offense is whatever because he's never he's never scored more than 22 points or so, 23 points in a season. He's not a 25, 26, 27 point scorer in the regular season. Playoffs, yeah. that jumps up to 26. That's a different story. But he's also not a superstar in the regular season. He's been a superstar in the last five – well, yeah, the last four – seasons that he's played in the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? He's been a superstar. So the biggest thing, though, is defense. Is he getting those steals? Is he getting those deflections? We saw in the playing game before he got hurt against Philly, we're like, God damn it, Jimmy. You really are doing all this crap. You're load managing all this stuff in the regular season because playoff Jimmy's a thing. We saw that before he got the MCL injury, he had 13 he was, points. He had like three steals, like a block. Like he was dumb. He was like, oh, shit. Like this guy's literally – like sandbagging the whole goddamn year but it's like the formula works but it doesn't like it's cute that we've gotten there and pat addressed it too like yeah it's great that we had success jimmy's amazing we don't want to trade him he's our best player but we haven't won so like it's yeah. great like we're i'm not spoiled i'm like appreciative i have gratitude for this i'm not like one of those stupid he fans i think we have to trade everybody every year to keep getting back to the finals and doing all that crap like or you know mickey's the cheapest we spent the seven most on salary last season. Yeah. Pat's asleep. No, he's not. Okay. Like, Spoh's not the best coach because he sucked last year. It's like, no, he still is. Like, have the front office made mistakes? Yes. Dating back to 2016 with the like bad contracts and attaching picks sure. to different guys. Like, yes, of course. Like, you and I are normal Heat fans. We're a little more optimistic and positive, sometimes delusional. You're more delusional than I am. That's <laughs> but, but I'm like, we can criticize too and say that we're wrong. Like, right. Like, I can criticize them, but. We've done more right than we've done more wrong. 
And a hundred percent. I have hope for this team, man. I don't know. I think I, I believe you for healthy. If all our cards play right, if J- Jimmy plays well, Bam plays better, and Jaime like keeps growing, and Kalal can help too. We can be a five seed. Like, and as long as Jimmy plays sixty something games, but plays in all sixty. Right? Yeah. To, to your point, you have to go hard in all sixty. There's no games where you stand. There's no games where you take six, seven shots. There's no games where you take the defense off. Like. If, even if it's 55 games, we're the year we got the number one seed, Jimmy played like 50 something, Bam played like 60. Mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry like kept us up. Kyle Lowry of the way. So, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think four or five seed is kind of like the ceiling um, for us. I think that's like the best we can do. It's going to be hard to leapfrog like Philly because I still think they'll be a good regular season team. Yeah. I'm what do you scared. think about them before we hop off? Like, I think because like, Look at Joel, dude. He's always going to get hurt. And PG most likely also. Like he had the first time in like ages he played 77 games last season, which is insane, right? Like, yeah. It's hard to leapfrog them. I am scared of Philly for the first time in my life. Um, if healthy. Uh, yeah, big contingent if healthy. But if, if they're healthy, then that could be a really good trio right there. Yeah. I mean, like, that's an amazing trio. Like, people acting like Paul George isn't great. When he plays, he's incredible. He's great. He's dueled LeBron in the playoffs. I mean, yeah, he was younger. But, I mean, the guy has playoff experience. He's had great moments in the playoffs. He's a good winner. Uh, like he, You don't have to win a championship to be a winner. That's more kind of like a mindset and a mentality also. I think in our ring culture, we kind of forget that. I think PG is a winner. I mean, you just look what he's done in the NBA and some of the performances and the team he's led. I mean, those Pacer teams were great. They just kept running into one of the greatest teams of all time. So can't exactly. really knock him for that. Same as the Jazz back in the day. Why did Stockton and Malone never win? Two of the best in yep. their positions, top 10 point guard of all time, top five power forward of all time. Uh, two words, Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. It's Chicago Bulls. They couldn't get past them. Same with Reggie Miller. Why did Reggie Miller keep losing in the East? Because they had to play against the Bulls. Like that's why Shaq went to the West because he couldn't. You know, it doesn't mean they're any worse of players, too. Like, um, and like the Celtics are obviously great. So, like, I think it's going to be in the East, Celtics and Philly. I think they're the two best teams. Um, The Celtics are obviously the best teams. The Bucks probably at three. Um, You know the. I got, uh, I, I, guess, I got Boston, Knicks, Philly, if healthy, then like Bucks are like four, or five, six range, kind of. I could see for what scares me of like losing in the playoffs, um, Bucks more than the Knicks. I just don't respect the Knicks. I don't I'm sorry. Either. That's how you should I, be as a Heat fan. Thank you for saying I, that. I just Thank never you. will. Like until they prove it and like, Everything fell right for them this year. They played the Pacers. I know they had some injuries, but please do not tell me you can't beat the Pacers. If you're supposed to be that championship contender, you can't beat a Pacers team who also was dealing with a little bit of injuries. Mathurin you can't beat out. them. They're a really good young player. He's a good player too, right? Benedict Mathurin yeah. was out the whole playoff. So, I mean, like, you know, no one cried for the Heat, you know, when Tyler Hero missed a couple series. Bam gets hurt in the finals. Goran gets hurt in the finals um, for the bubble finals. Jimmy's playing on one leg. They found a way. In fact, they get made fun of for making the finals. And then the Knicks are praised for <laughs> losing in the second round again. Just stop this. I, until they get to the conference finals, I will never respect them in the playoffs. I don't care. They could have... Kevin Durant, Giannis, Jokic, if they're wearing that Knicks jersey, out, they're going to find a way to lose in the second round. Yep, same with Philly. And closing, though, I think, yeah, because Paul George, I'm a Fresno guy, went to school with him. So I always have to root for Paul George. He's going to be the third guy on that team now. Like, if healthy, like, he doesn't have to be 1A. Yeah. Yes, he can't be 1A. He's not been a 1A. He hasn't been able to do it for the reasons you said. Injuries in the West, mostly with him and Kawhi, and then East was playing against LeBron. But Maxi is going to be the number two. Embiid's still the MVP. He doesn't look good in the FIBA. Who cares? He's still like, as when, when Embiid's healthy, he's a top five player. So yep. you have that. You have Paul George, who's a top 20 player. 
You have Maxi, who's probably now a top 25 player, right? You have three guys there. Maxi's probably going to be top 12 by the end of the season. Who knows? If he keeps, if he has a better year than next year, he's 22 years old or however old he is. So, like, you have Embiid, Maxi's then the next guy. You have Paul George as your three, like, your third guy out now. That's, that's a recipe for success if healthy, but screw the Celtics, screw the Knicks. Anything you want to say before we close out, Major? I just topic? want to clarify because I know people would jump on me for saying I'm scared of the 76ers but don't respect the Knicks. And the Knicks have done better than the 76ers. The Knicks are that same team and that style of team. And then the 76ers are improving. And I know the Knicks got Mikel. Yep. But he's a good player. But I think people are thinking it's a little bit too great. And they're still getting a little bit more of the same thing. Um, and – the 76ers just have better players. So, like, the Knicks are a better team, but in the playoffs, three players can win you a series. Um, three players can win you a championship a lot of years, too. So, and I want to clarify they added. Don't forget who they added, too. A Kayla Martin can you win you games in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, Andre Drummond, who's only 30 years old, right, like a little washed up, but he still averaged almost a double-double in 15 minutes last year with the play Bulls. A role. Like Eric Gordon, another guy who can hit like six threes in a game and help you win. Kelly Oubre Jr., someone who's athletic. Yeah. And they have a good team, dude, especially adding They're money. Good. Like they can add other pieces. They have money. They can get a veteran type of guy, that, like whoever's on the free agency that we haven't thought of. Marcus Morris has been mm-hmm. linked to them. That's another, you know, 3 and D big guy, veteran, who could win you a game or win you minutes in a playoff game. They have a lot. They have a lot of dudes, honestly, now. Like, they're going to be an interesting team. But, again, talk to me when you get to the West, the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time in 20-something, whatever the year it was that Iverson took them to the finals against the Lakers. That's the last time they made it yeah. to the Eastern Conference and passed it, right? When did AI do the step over step uh, – stepped over Ty Lue, right? That was like 99 or 2001, so one of those years. Correct me in the comments. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Major, for hopping on. We said 15 – or 10 to 15, it's 27. This happens to us every single time. It's fun. Time, like We can't help it. <laughs> time flies, man. Do you want to let the guys, the audience know where they can find your stuff? Or where they can yeah, find as Billy? always. As always, it's Twitter mainly, um, major underscore passants. So you see my name on the screen, just add a little underscore. Um, still making stuff and doing uh, Sky Force and Heat stuff for Five Reasons Sports. So find us at Five Reasons Sports on Twitter. Um, Going to be posting a caleb daniels interview soon um and keep doing player interviews talking to sky force players so you'll know about them um i tried to tell you all about josh christopher all last year so hopefully y'all have been paying attention to me um try to been telling you all about caleb daniels a lot of people started loving him hopefully y'all been listening to me we got guys in the pipeline and know it might not be as strong in a lot of people's eyes but man we'll be there covering the two ways seeing how they develop and i mean Probably the draft picks will be in Skyforce too. So I'll be covering them as well and hopefully get some interviews and letting y'all know how they do. And our boy Caleb Daniels, um, we had him on the pod yesterday. Really great dude. Really, we're all rooting for him, obviously, yeah. next season. Um, so yeah, check out that episode on my channel. And then Major is going to be dropping something on Twitter as well. Um, once you start getting those guys on your podcast, obviously, refer them over here. We're all friends, <laughs> you know? We'll get some more of the For Sky sure. Force boys on the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast. We would appreciate that as well. But, um, yeah, thanks for hopping on again, Major, and excited to check out those interviews. Yep, thank you.